Hey everyone, I hope you're all fine and welcome back to my channel. During my journey searching more information about Islam, I came across the YouTube channel People of Islam and I found it a really interesting channel. So this is going to be another reaction video on one of his uh, videos. It's called The Example of the Mosquito. So let's dive into it and start the video right away. Allah is not ashamed to present a mosquito as an example or anything that is above it. As for those who believe, they know that it is the truth from their Lord. But as for those who disbelieve, they say what did Allah intend by this example? The Quran, chapter 2, verse 26. The first question that comes to mind is what does Allah mean when using a mosquito as an example? Essentially, Allah is saying that even a fly is enough to demonstrate his existence. At first glance, you might be thinking, how? But by doing some reflection, it will hopefully make a lot more sense. Let's consider that this verse came down 1,400 years ago to a tribe in the middle of a desert. It is only in the last 200 years that science has made huge progress and knowledge has increased like never before. What we once thought was an insignificant little fly has actually proved to be a phenomenal species full of complexities. Here are some facts that we have come to know. The mosquito egg is always laid in water. As the mother lays her eggs, she sticks them together into an array to form a raft structure to stop them from sinking. From there, the eggs turn into larvae that swim around upside down on the surface of the water whilst breathing through a tube, a bit like a snorkel. The larvae then turn into pupae and then break out as adults with the ability to fly instantly. This small insect that has hatched is currently the deadliest animal in the world. Ever wondered why they have extremely fast reflexes? Well. That's because the mosquito has a pair of compound eyes. Each compound eye is made up of hundreds of mini eyes called lenses that curve around. Each lens takes an image at a different angle which its brain processes. For this reason, the mosquito can see almost everything happening around it at any given time without having to turn around. Physicists have been fascinated by this and have been trying to copy this system to develop self-driving cars, drones and safety cameras to say the least. The mosquito uses carbon dioxide sensors to detect your breath from up to 50 meters away. Once it finds its way into your room, it detects heat from your body to land exactly where it will start to suck your blood. This is how they see you in the dark when you are asleep. Amazingly, the mosquito uses six needles to suck blood in a highly sophisticated manner. First, it removes a protective layer to expose the needles. Then it uses the sharp teeth on the outside two needles to drill through your skin, like a saw. The two inner needles hold the cut open whilst the middle two probe around to find the blood vessel. Once a blood vessel is found, one of the probe needles spits chemicals to numb the pain and help your blood to flow. The other probe needle acts like a straw and starts sucking your blood. As it sucks, its body separates the water and squeezes it out of its back to pack in as many nutrients as possible. Sounds like a surgical operation, right? This is an image of the mosquito's foot. It is made up of a complex array of features that protect it and allow it to land on many different surfaces such as water to feed its eggs. As for its wings, the mosquito flaps them about 1000 times every single second to help it fly. It is clear that this tiny creature we can barely see with the naked eye is packed with many efficient systems allowing it to function and breed. Let's now refer back to the verse in the Qur'an. After Allah presents the example of a mosquito, he then says, and what is above it? 
The Arabic used for this, fama fawqaha, linguistically has many meanings, including what is above it physically and what is above it in size. Guess what? All definitions apply. In terms of size, well, we don't have to look too far into nature to see that a mosquito is nothing compared to what is out there. The universe is so complex, yet so perfect, that it is beyond human comprehension. What about above it physically? Well, scientists have discovered that some mosquitoes have tiny larval water mites that live above them as parasites. Allah continues the verse and says, As for those who believe, they know that it is the truth from their Lord. See, as Muslims, we believe that everything around us screams the existence of a creator. In fact, when we are asked for proof, we respond by asking where the proof isn't, even if it is just a fly. Allah then says, But as for those who disbelieve, they say, What did Allah intend by this example? Isn't this the case? Wouldn't the disbeliever credit all of this to anything other than a creator, such as evolution or chance? Wouldn't the disbeliever still consider the mosquito insignificant and unimpressive? The reality is, we are all so used to the world around us. We are so used to how perfect nature is and how perfectly its laws allow us to sustain life. The fact of the matter is, if all of humanity gathered together, we couldn't create a single fly. And if we gathered all of our knowledge, it wouldn't even be a small fraction of what we still don't know. Yet some of us sadly believe that we have enough wisdom and intelligence to deny there is a creator as a possibility, just because it doesn't make sense. Think about this. To copy just one of the systems in a mosquito, we need years of research and teams of scientists around the world to produce something half as good. Yet the mosquito is lighter than a feather, can hardly be seen, and is jam-packed full of systems and sensors that allow it to live. And remember, the mosquito is only one of millions of different species that are on planet Earth alone, each one having unique characteristics. Isn't this verse so incredibly profound? Yes, that is true. If you think about it, how perfectly nature is and, for example, the mosquito, how perfectly and detailed it is built with all its tools. And it has such a perfect way of working in order to survive. That is definitely not unimpressive. But we just think about the mosquito as one of the most annoying insects in the world and a source of spreading diseases. And it is precisely this creature that Allah took as an example of his existence. I can imagine 1400 years ago that this must have sounded crazy because in that time we didn't have any modern technology or equipment to to prove um, to prove how detailed and how complicated a mosquito is built so I can imagine in that time that people could have thought like why does Allah took this creature to demonstrate his existence And I think it is a beautiful reminder for us to not be arrogant because 
There are so many more species, as the video says, and there are so many things we still don't know, and there are so many things we cannot see with the naked eye, and yet we think that we know everything. <laughs> and even the most simple things that we can barely see are so interesting if you take a closer look if you see the perfection of nature that makes me think how is it possible that everything is so perfect so so then you think there must be a creator who who created all of this and one of the things what I love to live in this time is that we come to know so much more about all the creations on earth thanks to the modern technology and science we have so much more knowledge about nature and animals and if I see something that was written in the Quran and with the knowledge we have nowadays it makes so much more sense and that is mind-blowing that is amazing I definitely love this video and I found it so interesting let me know what you thought about the video I will add the link of the video in the description box and also the link for the YouTube channel People of Islam so that you can have a look over there as well if you want. It has many more informative and interesting videos. So I also want to thank you to be with me on this journey and to watch the videos together with me. I hope you guys are learning from it as well in the same time that I am learning about Islam. So thank you for watching and I see you soon in one of my next videos. Bye bye.